Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss the path environmental variable. Now if you aren't familiar with what environmental and shell variables are, I definitely recommend you check out the video I made on that topic and I'll make sure to post a link in the video description below. Now every time the, a shell session starts, it creates an environment that contains special variables that define various system properties. And these variables are referred to as environment and shell variables. The system will refer to these variables when performing certain tasks, and we can also make use of these variables if we like. Now this video is going to be focusing primarily on the path variable. And the path variable is an environmental variable in Linux that tells the shell which directories to search for executable files. That's all it does. Now, what does that exactly mean? Well, when you run a command in Linux, even simple commands like ls, cd, mkdir, and rm, all you're really doing is just running a simple program that exists on your system in a directory like slash user slash bin. Now, there are other places on your system that commonly hold executable programs as well, and some of those include slash user slash local slash bin, as well as slash uh, user slash sbin, and there's a few others. Now, it's important to note that not all executable programs need to exist in one of these directories um, for us to use them. They can actually exist anywhere in the file system. Now, does that mean that when we run a command or a program or an executable file, the operating system will search the entire file system, sorting through thousands of directories to find that command? No, that would be very processor intensive. By default, Linux will only search predefined directories like the slash user bin, or the slash user sbin directories, and there's several others. And there's several others. You may be wondering, well, you know, how or why does it know to search those specific directories for programs? And this is where the path variable comes into play. The path variable defines where the system should search for executable files and programs. Now, to see our environmental variables, uh, all we have to do is the command print nv. And I want to specifically grep for the path environmental variable. So this is the variable, and these are the this is the value of the variable. So this is just telling us that you know this machine, when we run a command um, for a specific program or file or executable script, it's going to search this location. It will then search this location. Um, so each of the different locations we'll search for are separated by this colon. And these are the default locations that an Ubuntu machine will search for. Now, if we wanted to reference that specific variable um, and say like we want to use it in a script or something like that, we would just use the dollar sign and then the path. And that's going to call the value of that variable. So it's just going to print out all the different locations that we're going to search for executable scripts. Now, it's important to understand what this path variable brings to the table. Now, remember, as I stated, all commands are just programs or executable files. And to kind of drive home that point, let's go to the slash bin folder. And I'm going to do an ls. And in here, you're going to notice a lot of the common commands that you use, like cp, um, df, grep, ip, journal ctl, right? I mean, any basic command that we use, PWD, PS, you know, they're all just scripts. They're just individual files that have been configured to be executable, and they're all stored in locations like slash bin or slash user slash bin um, and other places. So they're just scripts and nothing more. And you may recall that, you know, if we want to reference a file, which is what all of these guys are, they're just unique files. Right? If we do ls minus l, they're, they're no different than any other file, really. So if we want to call a file, um, whether we're trying to either open it with vi or execute it, we have to provide the path to that file. So we're in the slash bin folder, so we can run a command like, um, let's say, I think there should be ls in here as well. Yeah, so ls is in here, so if I type in ls, it's referencing that file that was just right up there. And then we can run that command and it's going to do whatever the script tells it to do, which is print out the contents of this directory. 
Now, if I change directories to my home directory, will I still be able to use the ls command um, without providing a full path? And you already know the answer to that. It'll still work, ls. And if we do that, it still works. But you may be wondering, well, we didn't give the path to that file. And there's no actual file named ls in here. So how does that work? Technically, we should have to do a slash bin slash ls to actually run the command. Or to do really any other command like slash, um, like touch, you would do slash bin slash touch and provide the full path to the touch file, which exists back in the slash bin directory. Oh, I guess it doesn't actually exist in there. Um, oh yeah, we have to provide a file name. Um, so like file. Okay, so, and then if we check that, it should now create a file one. So basically what I wanted to show you guys is that for those commands, for some reason or another, we don't have to provide the full path to that command. We can just type in um, CD or we can do mkdir um, or we can do ls. Um, we can run any of those commands no matter where we are. So if I change to the root directory, I can run an ls. And once again, I don't have to provide the path. And the reason for that, uh, the reason we don't have to provide the full path to the command is because of the path variable. So the path variable makes our life easier so that we don't always have to put in the full path um, to a specific um, executable file or command, and it'll just automatically know to check those directories so that we can just type in the name of the file that we want to execute. So it really does make our lives a lot easier. and. Um, one more thing I want to show you guys is, let's say I make a script, okay? Uh, and I'm going to go back to my home directory. Actually, first, let me change back to my user. And then, so we're in my home directory. And I'm going to cd into the scripts folder that I created. And let me just... delete everything in there. So I'm just going to make a quick file and we're going to call this script one. And all this script is going to do is just echo a certain line. So I'm just going to copy this and just paste it in here. Or maybe not. So I have this file that's going to be a script. Let me just change the permissions so that I can actually make it an executable file. All right, so now if I run the script one, I have to do dot slash to actually run the script. It runs the script, right? And if you remember the script, all it does is just echo, this is my script. That's all it does. Now. If I move to a different directory, let's say I move to the root directory, if I try to do script one, it's not going to work, right? Because it's looking for a file in the root directory named script one and it doesn't exist. So for me to execute that executable file, I have to provide the whole path. So I have to do slash home slash Sanjeev slash script one, and then it will run. Well, actually that's not right. Scripts and then script one, and then it can execute the script. So you can see that the scripts I make have a different behavior than those commands um, that comes with Linux, like ls and cd and um, uh, and like mkdir. And once again, that's all because of the path command. So the path or the path variable, and if you remember, the path variable is going to have the specific location. So it's going to look for all of these locations for the commands. And if you look through this list, you can see that the slash home slash sanji slash scripts isn't in there. So it doesn't know to automatically look in here. So when I run just script one without a path, 
it just looks for the local directory to see if it's in there to run it. And if it's not, then it's going to error out. So what we can do is we can add slash home slash Sanjeev slash scripts into the path variable to tell Ubuntu that I want you to search this directory anytime I run a command or a script so that I don't have to provide the full path. And we can create or modify a variable with the export command. Then I'm going to reference the path variable equals. And what this what we would normally do is just you know put in a value or whatever and that would set a variable. But we don't want to overwrite the path variable. We want to um, append another value to it. So we want to keep everything that's there already, but then just add one more um, path to the path list essentially. And so to do that, we would just do dollar sign path and then colon and then the path we want to provide. So that'd be home slash Sanjeev slash scripts. And now if we look at the path variable, we can see that my home directory, uh, well, the scripts directory within my home directory is now part of the path. So if I if I run uh, pwd, so I'm in the root directory, and there's obviously no file called script1, but if I run script1, it's able to look in that specific directory and run that executable script. So now I can run this no matter where I am. So if I go to slash var slash log and then type in script1, it works. Now, the problem with the um, the change that we made to the path variable is that that change is going to only apply for this current shell session. So if I close this out and then open another shell session, what's going to happen is if I try to run, um, if I go to a specific, just a random location actually, just go to root directory and try to run script one, it's going to so you can't find that command. So if we check the path variable, and let's see if it's still set. And as we can see here, it is no longer set. So I no longer have a, um, I no longer have the path variable pointing to that scripts directory. And that the reason for that is that changes made to a specific shell um, to any of the variables, including the path variable, are not going to um, persist after we close out the shell session and create a new one. So it's only going to be useful for that specific shell we were working in. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't make any permanent changes. It just means that we have to do it a different way. Now, the way to make it so that uh, a change to an environmental variable like the path variable remains across all shell sessions, um, even if we close it, is by modifying a configuration file that the shell actually that the shell actually reads before it loads, and the configuration file that we would have to adjust. Um, there's actually a couple of them. I'm going to show you two of them. So what we can do is go to our home directory, and then do ls minus la, and there's going to be a hidden file called bash.rc. So when when a shell first opens up. So when you open up a terminal, it's going to read its configuration files. And there's a couple of them, but one of them that it will read is the bash RC. So if we make any changes to any of the variable variables in the bash RC file, it will make it so that if I close out the shell and then open a new one, it'll just reread those new environmental variables that I set in that file. So what we can do is just open that up with sudo vi. and just go to the bottom of the file. And we're gonna put a new environmental variable. Um, well, we're not gonna make a new one. We're just going to modify the path variable in the same way that we did before by doing export path equals dollar sign path one slash home slash Sanjeev slash scripts. I'll close that out. So now let's see if the path variable points to my um, my scripts directory. And based off this output, it doesn't look like it does. So it looks like the change that we made didn't actually do anything. 
And although that's what it may look like, that's not actually the case. The problem is, is that when the shell first initializes, it reads that config file, but then it no longer has to read it again. It's already gotten all of the variables and configurations it needs. Um, so what we have to do is we have to make it reread that file. And there's no actual way to do that other than closing out this shell and just opening up a new shell. So let's close this terminal out and open up a new one. And now if we do uh, print NV pipe grab path, we can see that my scripts directory is in there now. So if I do a script one, it runs and I can do that from anywhere. And that's because the path properly knows to tell the system essentially that, you know, we need to check this directory for any commands that we run to see if the, that file or that executable script exists in there. Now, there's one more thing I need to show you guys before I wrap up this video, and that's going to involve changing users. So I'm going to change to user one. Um, so now we're logged in as user one. Let's try to run the script command. And you can see it doesn't seem to work, but if I provide the whole path, it works. Um, and the reason for that is that we changed the .bashrc file um, that was in, the, in my home directory of the user Sanjeev. So those changes, when I change the, any environmental variables, that only applies to the user Sanjeev. So if I look at print NV pipe grep path, he does not um, inherit those changes because I changed it on a per user basis. So we could go into user one um, and change the uh, bash RC file here. But um, if you wanted to, you know, update the path for, you know, hundreds of users, it may not be um, efficient enough to do that on a per user basis. So instead, we can modify this at the system level so that all users will get the update. And the way to do that is by modifying the slash etsy slash um, bash dot bash rc file. And all we do is just configure that same exact line, but in here. And this configuration file is read by the shell um, for all users. So the order I think that it normally follows is that it'll read this configuration file, the slash etsy slash bash dot bash rc, and then it will read the dot bash rc file inside the specific user's home directory. Um, so this will allow us to apply any changes at a system wide level. So I'm going to just do export path equals dollar sign path. And remember, um, to reread the configuration file, we have to open up a new shell. And I'm going to change back to user one. And now if I do scripts one, script one, um, it knows to automatically look in that directory. And we can see it set here. So he was able to inherit that configuration because we applied it system wide. Um, and so now, you know, if we close out this shell session and open up a new one for any user, um, they will all be able to get the updated path. All right. So that's all I wanted to cover for this video. Um, hopefully that cleared up any confusion you might have had with the path variable. Feel free to play around with this. Um, I always like to configure a dedicated scripts folder um, that I like to run at any point. And then once I do that, I'll update the path variable to point to that folder, and then I can run those scripts from anywhere in the uh, Linux file system.